hey first grade i'm back me and bezos and ramona and we're all here to share the story with you now when we left off yesterday wayne and ramona were fighting over wayne's sucker which i have to admit it's pretty gross if ramona grabbed wayne's sucker and started to eat it Ugh. but now now there's going to be some problems now see what you did, said Wayne, after he had pried his sucker out of Ramona's fist. See what you did, contradicted Beezus, picking on my little sister like that. She picked up the paper towel the sucker had been resting on and began to wipe the spatters off Ramona, who continued to howl. Boys and girls, Miss Rom Robbins raised her voice, let's be quiet. When the room is quiet, I know you are thinking. Lots of people don't know you have to think while you paint. Then she turned to Wayne. All right, Wayne, you may get a damp cloth and wipe up the paint. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Robbins, said Beezus. I want the sucker, screamed Ramona. Suddenly, Beezus decided she had had enough. The art class was one place where Ramona was not supposed to be. She was supposed to play in the sand pile. Mother had said so. She was not supposed to upset the class and spoil everything with one of her tantrums. Beezus made up her mind she was going to do something about it right now, too. Though she didn't know what. Ramona stopped at this instant, Beezus ordered. Go out and play in the sand pile or I'll, I'll, frantically, Beezus tried to think of what she could do. Then she had an inspiration. Or I'll tipple you, she finished. I guess I do have some imagination after all, she thought triumphantly. Instantly, Ramona stopped crying. She hugged herself and stared at Beezus. Don't tipple, Beezus, she begged. Please don't tickle. Then go out and play in the sand pile like Mother says you're supposed to, said Beezus. Don't tickle, shrieked Ramona, as she scrambled down from her stool and ran out the door. Well, thought Beezus, it worked. It really worked. Feeling suddenly lighthearted, she tacked a fresh sheet of paper onto her drawing board and sat staring at it. Maybe Ramona didn't have so much imagination after all if she couldn't draw a picture of an imaginary green lizard. Well, if Ramona couldn't paint a picture of Ralph, she could. Ramona was not the only one in their family with imagination, so there. Beza seized her brush and painted in another sky with bold free strokes. Then she dipped her brush into green paint and started to outline a lizard on her paper. Let's see, what did a lizard look like? She couldn't remember. It didn't matter much anyway, not for an imaginary animal. She had started the lizard with such brave, bold strokes that it took up most of the paper and looked more like a dragon. Beezus promptly decided the animal was, indeed, a dragon. Dragons breathed fire, but she did not have any orange paint, and she was so late in starting the picture that she didn't want to take time to mix any. She dipped her brush into pink paint instead and made flames come out of the dragon's mouth. Only they didn't look like flames. They looked more like the spun sugar candy Beezus had once eaten at the circus. She's talking about cotton candy. And a dragon breathing clouds of pink candy was more fun than an ordinary flame-breathing dragon. Forgetting everyone around her, Beezus made the pink clouds bigger and fluffier. Dragons had pointed things down their backs, so Beezus made a row of spines down the back. They did not like they did not look quite right, more like slanting sticks than spines. <gasps> well, they were lollipop sticks, of course. At that, Beezus laughed to herself. Naturally, a dragon that breathed pink spun sugar would have lollipops down its back. Eagerly, she dipped her brush into red paint and put a strawberry lollipop on one of the sticks. She painted a different flavor on each stick, finishing with a grape-flavored lollipop like the one Rain and Ramona had shared. Then she held her drawing board at arm's length. She was pleased with her dragon. It was funny and colorful and really imaginary. Beezus wondered what she should do next. Then she remembered that Miss Robbins often said it was important for an artist to know when to stop painting. Maybe she'd spoil her picture if she added anything. Nope, just one more touch. She dipped her brush into yellow paint and gave the dragon an eye, a lemon drop eye. There, her imaginary animal was finished. By the time it was 4.30 and most of the boys and girls had put away their drawing boards and washed their muffin tins, several mothers who had come for their children were wandering around the room looking at the paintings. Those who have finished washed their hands clean, said Miss Robbins, and I mean clean. Then she came across the room to Beezus. <gasps> Why, Beezus, she ex exclaimed. This is a picture to be proud of. I don't know whether a dragon should have lollipops down his back or not, but they were fun to paint, said Beezus. Of 
course he can have lollipops down his back. It's a splendid idea. After all, no one has ever seen a dragon, so no one knows how they should look. Miss Robbins turned to several of the mothers and said with admiration in her voice, Here's a girl with real imagination. Beza smiled modestly at her toes, while the mothers admired her picture. We'll tack this in the very center of the wall for next week's class to see, said Miss Robbins. It was fun to paint, confided Beezus, her face flushed with pleasure. Of course it was, said Miss Robbins, as she carefully placed the picture in the center of the wall. Didn't I tell you you worked too hard at painting before? Beezus nodded. That was the wonderful thing about it, she thought, as she scrubbed out her muffin tins. Her dragon had been fun, while her flying horse had been work. And she had imagination, maybe not as much as Ramona, but real imagination just the same. Here's a girl with real imagination, Miss Robbins had said. A girl with real imagination. A girl with real imagination. Beezus thought as she left the building and ran across the park to the sand pile. Come on, Ramona, it's time to go home, she called her little sister, who was happily sprinkling sand on a sleeping dog. And let's not forget Ralph. Good old Ralph. All right, tomorrow we're going to start a new chapter, Ramona and Ribsy. <laughs>